You're listening to the Platform Launchers podcast. I'm John Stonge, and it's great to have you with us. I always look forward to this time together where we get to talk about building and growing and monetizing our online platforms. We talk about taking your passion, turning it into a platform, and then turning that into a paycheck. So it's a very fun thing to talk about where we get to discuss all the things that matter to us and how we get to share these things with others. And uh, typically at the end of every one of these episodes, I like to tell you some of the the ways that you could follow up with me, but I'm going to tell you something real quick here. I'm going to let you know that if you go to platformlaunchers.com, I'm going to share this at the start. There's two things I want you to notice at our website. If you've never been there, I want to encourage you to go there platformlaunchers.com, you will see a 21-day platform development planning guide. And I'd love for you to stop by there and take advantage of that. You will also see that there is a 14-day free trial that you could take of our members club, which gives you access to our live training calls. It gives you access to our vibrant community of people who are, there's some people who are just knocking it out of the park in our members club, which is really exciting. It gives you access to hundreds of hours of our video library, and we want to encourage you to take advantage of that. So 14 days, you can try it out for free at platformlaunchers.com. And tonight, we're going to be talking about this idea of just the importance of rewarding your audience and your most active members. And I get very excited about ideas like this because they're very culture-influencing ideas. But before we get into our teaching this week, before we get into our training, I just want to introduce you to someone who I've become friends with through our Platform Launchers Members Club. And his name is Ryan Johnson from the great state of Arkansas. Ryan, how's it going? Please tell us uh, what you've got going on and maybe something that those who are listening to us on the podcast or those watching us on YouTube could take advantage of from your platform and from your expertise. Sure. Thanks, John, for having me on here. And uh yeah, so uh, just launched today. One of my wins uh, this week was to uh, or goal was to get my coaching one to one coaching service online, and so I've done that. I've launched that at three sparrows es dot com slash coaching, and uh, I just I just love empowering people and business, and so my my approach is to help the uh the workers be the best that they can be so they can grow the profits of their company and then also grow their careers i love it so three sparrows es.com slash coaching that's, that's where they need to go awesome mm-hmm. definitely check it out ryan's got a lot of good stuff there it's ryan johnson from the great state of arkansas also a great member here in our platform launchers members club grateful for him and uh and this week We're talking about this idea of the importance of rewarding your audience and your most active members. And uh, and that's a subject that I get really excited about. I also get excited. uh, uh, I I get excited about a lot of things in life. And some people tell me that one of the things that I also seem to get excited about is food. And uh, I, I wish that I could tell you that I had the most cultured tongue, the most cultured diet, that is not how I am wired. I ha- I am a man of very simple food tastes. And when I was growing up, uh, the town that I lived in did not have any fast food establishments until I was in high school. And when I was in high school, a Burger King was built within walking distance of our school. So you can imagine a Burger King within walking distance of a high school. You could tell who the clientele is going to be at certain hours of the day. And we were really, really excited. I don't know if you like Burger King or not, but at that season of my life, I thought Burger King was delicious. I ate there regularly. I'm pretty sure that my family contributed heavily to the budget of that new establishment when it got built in the town of Carbondale, Pennsylvania. But eventually, after going there enough times, I settled in on a favorite meal that I ordered just about every time I went there. I got a a bacon double cheeseburger with barbecue sauce. At the time, they would just call it the barbecue bacon double cheeseburger. And I would get a side of onion rings with that, and I would get a strawberry shake. Some of you are probably saying, that sounds delicious. And some of you are probably saying, that sounds terrible. Who would want to have onion rings and a shake within the same season of your life in your stomach? Well, I would. Uh, and, And in fact, that combination of flavors, it still reminds me of my teenage years. And ironically, and this kind of cracks me up, but a little while back, one of my friends from high school 
Uh, he actually gave me a gift card to Burger King in honor of how many times we went there in high school. And I had that bit, that that uh, gift card for several months. And finally, I was like, you know, I ought to use this thing. I haven't I haven't gone to Burger King in a while. So I went to Burger King the other day. And believe it or not, I ordered my standard meal just for the nostalgia. So I got a, a bacon double cheeseburger with some barbecue sauce. I got the onion rings. I got the strawberry shake, and it took me right back to the awkward teenage years that I had growing up in Carbondale, Pennsylvania. But a day or two after that, and I don't know, this is a little creepy when this sort of stuff happens. Sometimes you feel like your phone is tracking you and kind of realizes, hey, John just went to Burger King. Maybe you'd like to hear more news about Burger King. But a couple days after that, I happened to catch a video online about Burger King that relates to our topic tonight. And it was related to a it spoke of and it profiled an employee that had worked at a particular Burger King and had not missed a day of work in over 27 years. So he'd been working at that Burger King for over 27 years, and he never in that entire time missed a single day of work for anything. And somebody within the restaurant context, usually there's these restaurant groups that own uh, a whole like, you know, group of individual restaurants for some of these franchises. And so that point was brought up to the attention of the restaurant group that owned that particular Burger King location. And so they decided, you know, let's do a little something nice to thank him. And so they thanked him with a gift bag, all kinds of nice things in that gift bag. He said there were some gift cards. He was uh, this man when he was being interviewed. He uh, he said he was particularly excited about the travel mug that was in that gift bag. He said he uses it every day. There were movie tickets, so he's able to take his wife out to the movies. It was just a nice gesture. The man said he felt honored. He felt very grateful for the company's acknowledgement. And then the story aired on the evening news. And it's a very nice, feel-good story. But when the story aired on the evening news, a lot of people felt like the company really could have done more then give him this gift bag after 27 years of faithful service with a cheery disposition and never missing a single day of work. People were like, wait a second, he just got a gift bag with like a mug and some gift cards and movie tickets. And we thought maybe the company could have stepped it up a little bit. And so in response to that, someone set up a donation campaign online thinking, you know, maybe we ought to put something together to bless this man with some funds that he could use to make life easier both now and in retirement because he's getting closer and closer to that season of his life. And so they did that. They put that up. And the last I heard, believe it or not, that fund, and this is very recent, it's just a few days ago, the last I heard, that fund had increased to over $400,000. So there was a subsequent interview with the news network and they asked him about it, and he said he was excited about it. He didn't know what all the, the fuss was about, why people uh, cared so much about his story. But he said he'd already started sharing that money with his family, and he decided to use a portion of it toward helping his daughter buy a house. And so I looked at this, and I thought, all right, people are trying to bless this guy with something, and he has a hard time keeping it to himself. He's sharing it with other people. And in the end, I was left with the impression that this humble Hardworking man was motivated more by serving and blessing others than he was by keeping those blessings to himself. He was motivated by blessing other people more so than being the recipient of other people's blessings. And I just thought it was kind of special to see. I thought it was a very interesting story, just commendable in a day and age where you don't always expect some people to have like a great work ethic or, you know, sometimes like my father owned a store and I remember how hard it was for my father to get people at his grocery store. Like some people really did not have a good work ethic, but then others had a great work ethic. And I look at this man, he has a great work ethic. His employers must love him. How could they not? And all he wants to do is share the blessings he's receiving now with other people. I wanted to bring that story up because it very much relates to what we're talking about this week. If you're a business owner, or if you're an online entrepreneur, there absolutely is a lesson for us in that man's example. Because if you're motivated by serving and blessing others, more so than by what you hope to either acquire or consume, I think the fruits of that generosity is going to become highly visible over time in your business. And I also think that your generosity is going to contribute to a feeling of trust and a feeling of goodwill between you and the group of people that you're trying to serve. 
And so it's wise to sow those seeds of generosity into what you're building. And I think it's particularly wise to serve and to reward the most active members of your audience. So maybe if you're doing podcasting or blogging or something like that, you've got some people that are interacting with the content that you're producing. They're members of your audience that, that are active. What would it look like to reward some of those audience members? Or maybe if you're maybe you're somebody like me who runs a membership community or you've been thinking about doing that. Or maybe you have a small business where you're interacting with people on a day to day basis. And you have a group of people that you're working with. I think it's particularly wise to serve and reward your most active members, whether they be in your audience or your membership community, because if people are willing to invest their time to work with you and to learn from you and they keep showing up, I think it's wise to look for ways to express your thankfulness to them. Now, I won't use his name. I could I probably could use his name. I don't think he would mind me saying this, but I didn't ask him for permission ahead of time, so I won't use his name. Um, but several months ago, one of the members of our platform launchers members club, so our members community here, one of the members, he actually sent me a message that really encouraged me and it chronicled some of the ways he saw me attempting to reward our members and to sow the seeds of generosity within our community. And I remember as I read that, I just thought, boy, that was really nice to read. His message encouraged me and I let him know that I was truly happy to do that. That wasn't something that I, I viewed as a burden. It was something I was more than happy to do uh, because it feels right to celebrate the success of the people that I get to work with. And and so I, I get excited about doing that. I like doing that. And I want to encourage you, if you're within my hearing right now, whether you're live on the call or members club is live on the call. We also have members that access this via video. We have those of you joining us via YouTube, those of you joining us via the podcast, wherever you are. If you're a content creator or if you're someone who leads a membership community, I just want to ask a question. Have you ever given thought to rewarding your audience or to rewarding your most active members? Is that something you've ever thought about doing? Maybe that's something you're thinking about right now as I, I shared that story that that gentleman that worked for Burger King for 27 years or, you know, uh, or as I'm just talking about some things that we do here within our members membership community. And if you're thinking about that right now, let me give you a few examples of ways that that could be done, because I think sometimes people think I have the desire to do that, but I'm not exactly sure how to do that. And if I do that, I want to uh, I want to contribute to a, a generous culture overall, but I'm not really sure how to go about doing that. But I, I, I'll, I'll tell you this, even before I give you this list, I've got six things on my list here. Basically, every time you're generous with what you have by sharing it with others, you're conveying value to the person you shared it with. You're saying to that other person, I value you. And that's not something small. That's something big. So here's number one on my list. And I think that this is probably the most important one on this list. So I'm not even going to wait to share it at the end. I'm just going to share it right at the beginning. Number one on my list, if you're going to if you're going to be generous with the people that, that you're working with or your audience or your membership community, whatever it is, number one, share your time. Share your time. Time is one of the most valuable assets you have. Some people would even argue it's the most valuable asset because it's it's a fixed number, right? You don't get extra. Time is one of the most valuable assets you have. And access to your time is something you'll need to be more selective about when you start building something that begins to grow and you have a lot of people that want access to that time. You start needing to figure out ways to measure that and and be intentional about it. Now, again, if if your platform, if you're building an online platform, you're, you, there's an audience that goes with that, a lot of demands on your time. The nice thing is most people will recognize the, the fact that, that there are probably a lot of people asking you for that time. And so if you give that time, they're going to put a premium on the time that you're willing to invest in them because they know that there's a lot of demands on the time that you have. Your most active members or the people who are most faithful as part of your audience, if you're blogging, podcasting, doing anything like that, what they've done is they've demonstrated that they value your time. They 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 seek to access you through the content that you're producing. And if you directly share your time with them, that's a that's a wonderful way for you to be able to convey that you value them as well. So when I'm looking to be generous with something, that's something that I certainly consider as a way to 
hopefully attempt to reward those who are active and those who are participatory. Share your time. Here's another thing that we could do. This is number two on my list. Share the resources that you've created. So over time, if you're a, a platform developer, if you've, you've you know developed something like a message-based platform, over time, it's very likely that you're going to develop a library of digital and physical media content. And you're going to, that once it's created, it doesn't go away, right? So you're going to be building up this content. You're going to be developing a library of digital content and developing a library possibly of some physical media as well, like books. So you may have a library of books. You may have training videos. You may have courses. You may have other things like that at your disposal. Resources that you have created, don't hesitate to share them. So that means sometimes, you know what, spend the money to mail a signed copy of one of your books to someone that you're working with. Don't hesitate to do that. Mail them a book. What does it hurt, right? Share some of the digital resources you've created. Take something that's normally behind a paywall and give it away for the benefit of somebody else. There are a lot of things in life that I think are easy to regret. One of the things I never seem to regret is generosity. And I just want to encourage you, even if you feel like maybe sometimes you're being over generous, I don't know that there is such a thing. So if you've got some digital resources and some physical resources and you can afford to share those things out, and most of the time you can if you've got those things created, share them, be generous with them and uh, and and seek to bless those that are grateful for the content that you create. A third thing that you could do is this. Share the platform that you've built. Now, if you regularly listen to the Platform Launchers podcast, or if you regularly read the Platform Launchers blog, you'll notice some guest appearances from members of our community. We, In fact, we did it just tonight. Ryan Johnson just shared just a moment ago. And uh, if you look at the blog, you'll see a variety of guest blog posts that uh, many of our members have contributed to our blog over time. What I'm trying to do the platform I've built with those who I think honestly make it better. And my goal is to help use what I've built to help build awareness for what they're building, particularly for our members who actively join our live calls. Now, there are people that are part of our members club. I genuinely appreciate them. Um, they mainly utilize the recorded and video content. And if you're accessing this and that's you, I greatly appreciate that, that you're part of our group. But I have to say, there's a part of my heart that has a strong affinity for our members who join us live because it, their live presence contributes to our culture. And if people are willing to carve out time, they're willing to carve out time to be part of what we're doing and be part of our training. Um, I look at that as an opportunity to actively help promote what they're building as well. So I love sharing guest blog posts from our members. And those of you that are members here, uh, don't hesitate to send me those from time to time. Just continue to send them. We've got a bunch of them that we've shared recently on Platform Launchers. But if you have something that you've written that you'd love to share, you'd love if I share on there, I'm always willing to do that. If it fits with the content we're doing, I love sharing that stuff. I love sharing their guest blog posts. I love opening up the mic during our, our live calls like this to invite people to share what they're building. Share the platform you have built with those who are part of your audience or part of your membership community. It's a way you can be generous. All right, number four on my list is this. Share the connections you've been making. Share the connections you've been making. So connecting with like-minded people who share the same passions, that's a real privilege. I, and I love the opportunity to connect others when possible. Love the fact that in our so many connections get made because we're part of a group here. People are connecting with each other, showing up on each other's platforms, giving each other good counsel and inspiration. It's exciting. Now, when making connections, you have to be careful not to overdo this. Sometimes I've met people who are trying to make connections. I've seen that happen a few times. You don't want to overdo it. But when it makes sense, it can be a real blessing. Uh, I recently connected with someone with a very unique an interesting story. And then I decided to connect her to a popular YouTube channel that I was actually friends with the person who runs that YouTube channel. And he tries to feature stories like her. It was a very specific niche. And uh, I thought, you know, I'm just going to connect them. And he said, yeah, I would love to interview her. And he ended up interviewing her and featuring her on his YouTube channel. And uh, it was a very exciting thing to be able to, to be part of. 
share the connections that you've been making, share those with others. It's a great way that you could actually be generous with those who are act actively taking a role in what you're doing. Two more on my list here. And this one I think is kind of obvious. So I'll just mention it briefly, but I think it's meaningful just the same. Share discounts that save your active audience or active members money. Share discounts that save them money. And again, this is very easy to do. You can create coupons. I, I use Kajabi to build a lot of my website content, and they have these coupon builders that are right inside the software. So share coupons. I recently sent out a coupon that saved people $100 off a course. And you would say, well, doesn't that cost you $100? Maybe. But at the same time, I look at that and I, I think, well, maybe some of those course sales wouldn't have even happened if I didn't offer that coupon. So it could be like a win-win, but you could create coupons, you create special offers, you could create product and coaching bundles. We were talking about that last week on the podcast here. Uh, that You could do those things and discount your prices in such a way that it's a real benefit to people who utilize your content. I do that regularly, and I actually look at it and I say, I feel like it's a win-win scenario. The people you're serving benefit, but the truth is I think you'll probably benefit from increased sales if you do that with regularity. Sometimes it could be a way to maybe prime the pump or a service that hasn't been getting a lot of attention, maybe just sharing a discount with uh, with people that are are eager to utilize it might be a way to to save them some money and, and generate some business for you. It's something worth considering, and it's a way that you can be generous. Number six on my list is this, and this is more mindset related, but this is the finale on my list here, and, and I, I hope it's beneficial. Number six is share your wisdom by actually paying attention to what your active audience or active members are doing, and then offer some feedback related to it, right? Share your actually paying attention to what they're doing. We all appreciate being noticed. Everybody does, whether you're an extrovert or an introvert. It's nice to be noticed, especially if you've worked hard on something. Take time to pay attention to what your audience or your members are building. Offer words of encouragement and counsel from time to time. Try your best to stay updated with newsletters. If they have newsletters, get on those newsletters, figure out how to do it, subscribe to it. Uh, you pay attention to their social media updates from your most active members. Pay attention to that sort of stuff. Notice it. They will notice that you're noticing. And that's a way that you could convey value to other people. The truth is, like, within platform launchers, I'm mentioning this as a principle, but this is not something that somebody has to tell me to do. I actually take a lot of interest in seeing the things that our members are building I, I just find it very edifying. I find it very inspiring. Sometimes our members have, have done things I'm thinking, boy, that would be such a good idea to incorporate into what I'm doing. So we learn from each other. If we pay attention and we can actually convey value to one another by paying attention like that. In general, let me say this as we wrap up this week. In general, never fear generosity. Generosity or sharing with others should never make you feel like you're being taken advantage of. I think... I think a giving spirit is good for your heart. And I also think it's good for those who receive the gifts that you share. I also think it's good for the reputation of the business or the platform you're in the process of building. Never fear being generous. You're not being taken advantage of when you're generous. You're being a blessing to others. And I, th I think that blessing is probably going to come back to you many times, many times over. Before we wrap up, I'll just remind you again, of uh, the variety of things that I mentioned there at the start. If you want to stop over to platformlaunchers.com, you can find our 21-day platform development planning guide. It's free to download. You could also take a 14-day free test drive of our members club, and you could utilize all the content that we have there and get to know some of our members here. Great group of people. You can also visit three sparrows, es.com slash coaching and check out Ryan Johnson and some of the things that he's doing and some of the coaching offerings that he has over there. I want to give that a plug as well. But that's it for us this week. Our time quickly on the podcast here. Always grateful to be able to spend this time together with you. Hope you'll be with us next week, whether you're watching from YouTube or listening on the podcast. And in the meantime, have an awesome week as you build, grow, and monetize your online platform. Take care.